One of the many benefits of attending baseball games at Dietrich Park is you never know who you're likely to meet. You shouldn't live in the past. It's dangerous. But to visit it is a, just a, a wonderful experience. Elected to the Baseball Hall of Fame in the year 2000, Tony Perez, born May 14, 1942, in Cuba, was a fixture on Cincinnati's Big Red Machine Clubs of the 1970s. His 1,652 career RBIs ranks him as the most by a Latin American player in the major leagues. Was there any specific impression of Pete Rose at that, that first time you played together in Geneva? Well, he was starting to play second base and uh, because they moved him, like I say, from the catcher. And, and uh, uh, he was a little rough, you know, he landed in the position. Uh, he always hustled. They, call him, they started calling Charlie Hustle there. And uh, uh, he was the, the most, he was only half a year there, but he was the most popular player because the way he played, mm -hmm. the way he played the game and, uh, you know, running all the time like he used to do through his big league career. And, and uh, and that's what he more impressed me about it. He wasn't that kind of hitter. He was later, and uh, he was trouble to get around the ball. But he was always a contact hitter and run hard all the time. And uh, that's what I started calling Charlie Hosen. <laughs> contact hitter. The most exciting World Series probably ever was 1975. Right. Uh, and you really were the hero, but nobody really remembers that because of the sixth game. With right. Carlton Fisk. Sports writers called manager Sparky Anderson Cincinnati Reds the Big Red Machine. And in 1975, they more than lived up to their billing, rolling past their nearest Western Division competitors by 20 games. Then, beating Pittsburgh in three playoff games to win the pennant. It was an extraordinary team and its spirit was best captured by the third baseman, Pete Rose, who said, I'd walk through hell in a gasoline suit just to play baseball. Like Ty Cobb of an earlier time, Rose played with a ferocity unmatched by anyone in the game. Your impression of the sixth game, because it was so back and forth, probably one of the most exciting games. It was. Uh, what was your impression as that game was kind of seesawing there? Well, that game was so well played by both teams. A lot of great plays making on the, on the game, and uh, a lot of good pitching, and, uh, and a lot of clutch hitting. I mean, uh, uh, Bernie Carbo's home run on the, on the eighth inning was the clue for the, I mean, for crucial for the, for the Red Sox uh, on that game. Uh, because for hitting, hitting, hitting tight the game and that inning, Carlton Fick never come out. And Carbo, I remember, looked so overmatched. As he was up at the plate, the first two pitches, he looked just terrible. Carbo a little bit late on the swing. 2-2 two -two pitch. Just did get a piece of it to stay alive. You talk about fighting off a good pitch. Looked like he hit that out of the catcher's glove. He did. The pitch. Carbo hits a high drive. Deep center. Way back. Home run. I remember the darkness of the stands and the movement in the darkness of the stands. This enormous noise came up. And the game was tied. Carlton Fisk was the leadoff batter in the bottom of the 12th inning. Here's Fisk. Game tied, 6-6, Darcy pitching. 
Chris takes high and inside. Ball one. Freddie Lynn on deck. There have been numerous heroics tonight, both sides. The 1-0 delivery to Fisk. He swings, long drive, left field. If it stays there, it's gone. Home run! The Red Sox win! And the series is tied three games apiece. Carlton Fisk in a 1-0 pitch. They're jamming out on the field. His teammates are waiting for him. The ball hit the foul pole. And the Red Sox have sent the World Series into Game 7 with a dramatic 7-6 victory. What a game. This is one of the greatest World Series games of all time. This home run was the more popular because he wins the game. He wins the game. And, uh, and uh, the way he was, or the you know the exciting and uh, the Red Sox coming back in that game, uh, and that was a great game. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Even when we lost that game, we enjoyed it. And uh, and we were talking about after the game, uh, Pete and Johnny and uh, Morgan, myself. We were talking about how the great the game was with Sparky. <laughs> When Spike spotted us and said, well, I didn't think it was that great when we lost. I said, yeah, we still, it's a great to be part of a game like this. And don't worry about it, we get it back tomorrow. Game seven. 75 million people were watching on television. Bill Lee held the Reds scoreless for five innings while his teammates ran up a three to nothing lead. But then Cincinnati came alive. There's his there it is. He's waiting for that one. That one is gone over everything. Out of all the guy that uh, hit the hit the, uh, the big home run in the seventh in the seventh game. Yeah, I hit that home run. Uh, we were losing three to nothing, and uh, Bill Lee was throwing a good game, and and. But he made a mistake to throw me a, a, a blooper pitch that I changed out, whatever he called him, and I hit it out, and then we came back at 3-2, and then we tie and uh, win the game later, and then Joe Morgan's hit. And, and that, was, uh, that was great, because uh, I don't think we can, we can afford to lose another World Series. We already lost in, uh, in 70 and 72, uh, one to the Orioles and the other one to the A's. And, and uh, if we lost that one, I think the big red machine uh, popularity, I think maybe go down a little bit, or the <laughs> reputation going down, because, uh, uh, you know, we make it over there, and we never, we never put it together and, and, and win. But we won that game, we win that series, and, uh, and then uh, and then the next year, and the year after that, we just uh, sweep the Yankees in 70. When you close your eyes and say, Greg, the funniest thing that ever happened to Tony Perez was what do you say? The funny thing ever happened to me? Well, uh, really, you know, sometimes you make a mistake and uh, and and and, and sound funny. Uh, and I remember uh, we in, in Los Angeles and uh, the uh, and was one out and somebody uh, was a man on first and third and and there was a ground ball hit to me like a do for a double play and, uh, and I just turned the double play, I stepped in the back and, uh, and I think it was three out and the wrong <laughs> score. It was funny, you laughing, but to me it was a mistake, <laughs> but I later, right. later I laughing because it's a funny thing that ever happened to me. With Pete and Joe and Johnny Bench, the big red machine, is that, as you reflect back, are those your highlights? Oh, yeah. I uh, always remember, um, and people remind me every day. I mean, every, everywhere you go, they say, Tony Perez, oh, yeah, and we pop the, the big red machine. And that's great because we got a great team. Uh, we got eight guys who go out there and um, play hard every day, know how to play the game, know how to win for the team. And, and plus, we got a bench. Uh, uh, they, everybody has said they roll, and when every time they come up, they do their job. And the pitching wasn't that great, but they do the job every day. And, uh, and Sparky did his job as a manager, plus the coaches. I mean, there was a team who everybody put a little bit uh, uh, to be a, 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 perfect, uh, a perfect group. I mean, a group of people who know how to win ball games. Who's the greatest player you saw? Well, I gotta say Willie Mays. Uh, I think uh, uh, I, I see a lot of great players. Uh, sure. don't, don't take me wrong. There's a lot of great players I play against, uh, like Roberto Clemente and Hank and uh, the Cepedas, the, Cepeda, the uh, Macovies. Uh, well, you know, and the one I saw like Musial and Ted Williams, DiMaggio. I mean, uh, but I think uh, Willie May was the most complete player I saw.